Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Uh, today I'm here to share a video with you that I'm not really excited to do, but I think it's important for people to see. Uh, what I have in front of me here is one of my favorite Venus flytraps coming out of dormancy. This is my SD Kronos. It looks a lot different than the last time you guys seen it. Problem with this one is it's been through a really rough spring coming out of dormancy. One of the first things that happened to it is it got attacked by a squirrel or a bird or something. The plants got a little dug up. You can see the pot, the soil is kind of uneven and kind of valleyed there. There was a, a squirrel or a bird or something that got in there and dug it up. And now after about a month after that, it started to recover, started to put out some shoots. It's actually now looks like it's a victim of crown rot. And crown rot is the main reason that we're here to talk today. I want to give you guys kind of an overview of crown rot, what it looks like, what to expect, and then maybe even possibly how to fix it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix this. This plant could be this one over here anyway. This was my big beautiful one. This one could be a goner. This one still looks like it's starting to put out new shoots again. So I think it's recovering, but this one here doesn't look good. So we're going to talk about crown rot. We're going to repot this. Hopefully if I pull it out of here and it looks like there's still some healthy rhizome, we'll replant it. But one thing that I wanted to share with you is that sometimes crown rot happens, even if you've given it really good care, even if you've given it really good conditions, Sometimes crown rot just happens and there's not really much that you could do about it. The reason I think this one got crown rot is we've been having temperatures in the 70s and 80s during the day and then it drops down to the upper 40s, mid 50s during the night. And what happens is these guys need water during the day and but that water sticks with them at nighttime. So we get the colder temperatures, which is kind of hard to deal with sometimes having the higher during the day and then lower during the night. I think that's kind of a perfect breeding ground for crown rot, but let me show you this plant right here real quick. I'm going to show you a plant that I received at the same time as this one. It's in the exact same soil substrate. I received it from the same nursery. It's in the same size pot and it's received identical care as this here. So here is a bristle tooth. And as you can see, this fly trap is actually doing really, really well. It's had the exact same conditions. It's in the exact same substrate. It's got the same size planter and it's been watered almost identical. Everything, the care has been identical. They've been in the same spot in the sun. But as you can see, one Venus flytrap is thriving and really coming out of dormancy well. It's gonna produce some really nice traps this summer in growing season, and one is not. So if you guys get crown rot or something happens, don't be too hard on yourselves. This stuff just happens sometimes. But let's go ahead and I'm gonna to try to pull this one out here without disturbing this one. I'm hoping that's something that I'll be able to do, but we'll see if I have to disturb them both, I might have to do that. But I'm hoping that I can get it out of here, remove some of the rot, and then hopefully it'll it'll take off with what, what healthy rhizome is left. All right, so let's go ahead and start by getting this out of here. While I do this, I'm gonna kind of show you something real quick. Um, one of the reasons I suspect that it has crown rot is I pulled a leaf off the other day and it came out really easy. Usually when the, the, the leaf pulls off really easy and kind of slides right off the rhizome, that means that there's some rot in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull one out now and see if it I kind of get the same. Yeah, see, look at that. See, that just kind of slid right off. It came popping out of there really easy like that. Shouldn't see there's still some healthy rhizome on that, but the problem is, is it just came out so easy. That usually is a sign of rot. And that's why I think I got some rot here. We're going to go ahead and pull this whole thing out. It does look like there's some healthy rhizome, at least on this piece. So that does give me some hope that there's some healthy rhizome still down there and that we'll be able to get this repotted and save it. Sometimes you can just kind of shave off some of that rot and then um, it'll actually take off healthy from there on out. Oftentimes your plant doesn't recover from rot. So there's a good chance that I'm going to lose this plant and it is what it is. And that's just something that I have to deal with. And that's something that we all kind of have to deal with. Usually the reason you get rot is too much water around the crown. And like I said, I think the problem is, is that I've had really low temperatures at night and then the higher temperatures during the day. So we've had a rainstorm over the last couple of days. And I think that that's actually kind of fueled to the rot a little bit. That's sort of sort of a unique situation that I have here in the Northwest where some places don't have the, the high low in the spring, but that's one thing that we have to deal with here. That's a little bit of a unique situation. And that's why I really preach to people that you have to make sure that if you, if your temperatures go down, that you can't just leave these sitting in water all the time. You really should try to gauge it so that you're giving it water at the beginning of the day. And hopefully by the end of the day, the water's down low and then it allows it to not be sitting in water overnight. In the summers, we, we get down into the seventies, upper sixties, seventies. We don't have to worry about it as much, but springtime, it is a kind of a common time for us to, to see some rot here, but let's go ahead and dig this one out of here. I'm super pumped about teaming up with California carnivores. 
They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery you fall in love with. On top of that, they've also been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter CP Hub at checkout. That's CP Hub. Head on over and pick out yourself a new carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, so far so good actually. I was able to get this clump out and that one is still in there. So we'll see if I can manage to kind of let some of this dirt go back in here. Cause I, I would like ultimately for this one to stay in here while I pull this one out. Yeah, see how that leaf just fell off? Look at that. So here we go. So yeah, you can see we have a ton of rot here around the rhizome. You see there's some healthy rhizome there. That one's pretty healthy, but then look at all this rot coming down into the rhizome. These leaves are just completely rotted. This whole portion of the rhizome is just completely rotted. Look, as I peel this back, you see that's just rot. And what'll happen is if this goes untreated, see all that rot right there? That's just gonna continue to spread throughout the whole plant and it'll rot and kind of kill the whole thing. And I don't know if there's gonna be enough rhizome here left, but we are certainly going to try. See so that, that's probably the, one of the only healthy pieces left and that one has almost no roots. So I don't know if that one's gonna make it. And then this one here, same thing. All the roots were attached to the part that was basically completely rotted. See, none of this is going to make it. This is all just rot. And see, there's the, the main root system. So yeah, I don't, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more optimism getting into this plant. This is our best chance right here. We do have white rhizome with no roots, so it's not impossible. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kinda, well, there is one root right there. And the root, the root that we're looking at here does have a white tip, which is a good sign. So I, get, I suppose that it is possible, but I'm gonna try to get off some of this rot right here and see if we can get this ready to repot. All right, so I have my little scissors here. I'm just gonna take the blade of the scissors here and try to scrape off this part here that's rotted. Try to get as much of that rot off as possible because if you leave the rot on there, a lot of times it's just gonna continue to rot. Yeah, this one's getting smaller and smaller. This really doesn't look good for this plant. That's about all I want to do. If I do any more, it's just going to fall apart. So there we go. That's what's left of my beautiful SD Kronos, um, other than this guy here, who does seem like it's doing a little bit better. But yeah, there's some white rhizome. So if there's white rhizome, there's always a chance. I got a flower stalk here, or a, a part of one, and a piece of growth here. So I do have a little bit of green for some photosynthesis. So I was going to repot this into a brand new planter, but I feel like the odds of this surviving aren't great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go ahead and plant it back in here and uh, go ahead and put it back outside and see if we can maybe miraculously see if this will take off. But I don't like to give up hope as long as there's white. And as you can see, we do have this little bit of white here and a little bit of root. So let's go ahead and get it potted back in its same planter and see what happens. I'm gonna add some fresh substrate. I don't wanna put the, the old moldy stuff back in there. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this out two different substrates a little bit. You can see our substrates are just a little bit different. This is a plant that I got from Flight Trap Store. And although it's the same fundamental concept of peat moss, perlite, and sand, it's just a little bit different. You can see that. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a little hole here. I don't have to make too deep of a hole because there's not much left here. So I'm just gonna make a little bit of a hole. Actually, that's probably too deep because you're really only supposed to bury it up to the rhizome and well, the rhizome is just right here. So let's go ahead and put it about right there. And then we're gonna see what happens. You can see that a couple of these stems that I pulled off here have a good enough rhizome on them, a piece on the bottom where I did plant them as well. Um, just the off chance that they might propagate and uh, actually take off. So if you do have pieces, that come off that are still in pretty good shape. I do recommend planting them and seeing if you can get any hits on those. If you found this video interesting or possibly helpful, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. 
Uh, hopefully being able to see a little bit of crown rot here with a plant will help you understand why I preach to make sure to not just leave, leave these sitting in water all the time. It's really important if you have it, if it's really hot and you have constant hot temperatures at the night as well as the day, then it's okay to leave the tray of water full because it's going through water so quickly. But if you have those low temperatures at night, you do need to manage it a little bit to make sure that you don't run into a situation like this. This was my favorite Venus flytrap and the crown rot, as you can see, just completely took it over and destroyed it, which is a huge bummer, but hopefully sharing this video with you guys will help some people in the future understand what signs to look for. If you see your fly traps turning black really quickly, that's a good sign that you either have some type of um, pest, crown rot, or some type of rot. Usually, this, this plant looked really good about two weeks ago, even though the squirrel had got it and attacked it. About two weeks ago, it still had most of its traps. It looked really good. And then within a week or so, everything just started dying quickly. And that's how you know that usually you have that, that something wrong with it. These will turn black and die over time, but it's usually a slow process. It'll start at the base, and it'll start to turn black as it goes to the end. But crown rot, it turns black quick. Usually you'll have one turning black within a day or two completely and entirely. So just make sure that you watch for that. If you see your, your traps turning black, um, it might be time to pull it out, see if there's any rot. And if there's rot, try to cut it away and see if you can manage it. I wish I would have caught this one a little bit sooner. Problem was is that uh, my daughter graduated high school last week. My son's been in basketball tournaments, so I just haven't been home a lot. I've been giving these water and then basically leaving. Uh, so I haven't been taking as much care of them as I absolutely should. But anyway, if you liked the video um, or if you found it helpful, make sure to like, subscribe. All that stuff really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to leave a monetary contribution, you can hit the thank you button at the bottom of the video. Um, but just liking, subscribing, that stuff helps me out so much in my journey of starting my own carnivorous plant nursery someday. But thank you so much for being here and I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.